What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the death of a scam wrestling promotion by Top Ten Wrestling. This should be a very interesting one. There are some companies out there that will per, uh, pretend to have uh, some major star on the card or a major guest appearance. People pay the money, obviously, to see said guest appearance, only for them to probably get to the show and that said person doesn't show up at all so i'm willing uh, well i'm very interested to see what what uh promotions out there doing these scummy scammy ass tactics because there are promotions that will scam you to you know get as much money as possible knowing damn well they don't have said talent or wrestler or hall of fame or whoever at the event so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support man let's get right into this one man. happens when a shady wrestling promotion dies and then 10 years later is bought back just to scam everyone all over again one pro wrestling ran their first ever show live from the doncaster dome on the 1st of october 2005 and it was the <clears> first <throat> chapter of a very turbulent tale one pw a cruel twist <clears throat> of fate their first ever show featured names such as chris sabin jerry lynn the blue meanie Al Snow, D'Lo Brown, Corey Graves, Austin Aries, wow. Redman, The Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, Abyss, AJ Styles, and more. 1PW were bringing American talent to British soil, and as Damn. a result, their shows were stacked. They ran their next set of shows in January of 2006, a two-tag show that featured matches like Abyss vs. Sabu, Samoa Joe vs. Masato Tanaka, oh, AJ wow. Styles vs. Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lynn vs. Petey Williams, and the unbreakable triple threat but with Charlie Haas also in there. 1PW were not slowing down with the amount of fly-ins and the amount of good talent they were booking. They were essentially just TNA, but on British soil. They had all the foreign talents that they'd fly over, and they mixed them in with a roster of numerous local and British talents. And 1PW would continue in stride in 2006. They ran about a dozen shows in 2006 and kept up with the big names coming in. Names that wrestled and appeared for 1PW in 2006 that I haven't even mentioned yet include Brian Danielson, Jimmy oh, okay. Snooker, Nigel McGuinness, and Bret Hart. Yes, that's right. One of the biggest names ever in wrestling wow. who was long retired was flown in by 1PW to give a five-minute speech. And of course, Teddy Hart made an appearance for them too because of course he did. It's the mid-2000s. It's an indie show in the mid-2000s. Of course, Teddy Hart is on it. <laughs> they also crowned their inaugural champions that year with Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm winning the tag titles, Pac winning the open weight title, and Abyss winning the world title. However, booking all these names and spending all this money to fly out talent and pay for their appearance was always going to catch up to them. And unsurprisingly, with the mm. amount that 1PW were flying people in, it came back to bite their ass very quickly. And on January 5th, 2007, at approximately 1.26 p.m., 1PW posted a statement on their website announcing they had gone into liquidation. Oh, the statement no. reads as following. It is with the deepest regret and sadness that 1PW Promotions Limited announces today that the company has ceased trading, effective today, and has entered into liquidation. The cease of trading is effective immediately, and thus all future dates, including the January 13th No Turning Back show, are sadly cancelled. On behalf of 1PW Promotions Limited, I want to extend our heartfelt apology to anyone inconvenienced or disappointed by the cancellation of upcoming shows. They advertise where you can get refunds from, and 1PW Chairman Stephen Gortley also left a personal statement in the note, saying that he was prepared for the backlash and to not listen to what the dirt sheets are going to be saying about this interesting hmm. Stephen Gortley by the way is a man who you will hear a lot more about in the next part of this video 1PW would actually run a show shortly after this a farewell show titled 1PW will not die a show that featured a much less stacked card and was very very showing of the money they had lost Damn. 1PW went out on a whimper or did they? Because just three months later, 1PW was back with another show titled 1PW Resurrection and welcome to the trend of 1PW announcing that they were dead and then just coming back. This uh... is the first of many. 1PW returned to running shows and flying in talents from the States, which where the money came from to do that 
Who hmm. even knows? But you have the likes of El Generico coming onto the show to defend the PWG world title. How 1PW were getting stuff like this booked is still beyond me. In 2008 though, we would see what would be the first in many changes in ownership when Stephen Gauntley bailed out of the company in 2008 and it was taken over by 1PW wrestler Dragon Asu as well as other wrestlers on the roster. And also that year in 2008, a man named Danny Rod would become owner and then in 2009, he would become the sole owner of the company. And this would usher in an entirely new era for 1PW. <laughs> Uh oh, what's going on here, man? I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm interested. What the hell's going on, man? With the ownership of 1PW now in the hands of Danny Rod, 1PW went back to doing 1PW things, booking talents from the States and flying people in with money which nobody knows where they got it from. And it was only about a year and a half before 1PW would get another death announcement. In August of 2010, another statement was posted by 1PW. They announced they had to cancel all their upcoming shows due to outstanding debts from a show they ran in Liverpool with talent not getting paid. Paid. However, at the very end of the statement, Danny says it's not the end of 1PW, it's just see you down the road. Following this, fans of 1PW would start a campaign to get new investors behind the company, and well, it seemingly worked because three mm. months later, the 1PW website was updated to say, personally from Danny Rod, 1PW is back and soon to be better than ever. Keep checking for updates. 1PW had been bailed out again. And 1PW seemingly had big plans under these new investors, as in February of 2011, it was announced that Shawn Michaels would be coming to 1PW to appear for them in October of 2011. That's a big and name. To a UK tour. This was huge. Shawn yeah. Michaels had retired less than just a year prior oh. and was still a huge name and a name that a lot of people wanted to see. It was announced that the tour Shawn Michaels would be doing in the UK would consist of him appearing at 1PW shows in Doncaster as well as doing a meet and greet in Oxford. Mm. 1PW also announced a tour of the Middle East and a trip to Dubai of all places. So seemingly a lot of money was being pumped into 1PW but once again this is 1PW and unfortunately nothing ever lasts in 1PW. On July 2nd of 2011 a post was made to the UK fan forums that reads as followed. Just seen on Facebook, Mark Sloan's meet and greet in Oxford in October with HBK has been cancelled. I wonder what implications this could have for 1PW. Uh -oh. Your first question based on this post is probably, who is Mark Sloan? Mark Sloan is a wrestling promoter based in the UK, and this post also mentions the meet and greet in Oxford, which is something I mentioned before was taking place with Shawn Michaels. Essentially, Mark Sloan was the promoter behind the meet and greet in Oxford, which was a completely separate thing to his 1PW appearances. Mark Sloan, though, would actually respond to this post saying that he had received information that caused them to pull the appearance of Shawn Michaels and that every single ticket had been refunded for the meet and greet. Interestingly though, he also went on to say, we felt it was best for the people who purchased tickets to have their money returned and for us to stop advertising the fact he would be in the UK on that date. Almost implying that, well, Shawn Michaels wasn't going to be in the UK on that date. Hmm. Despite this though, 1PW continued to advertise that Shawn Michaels would be appearing for them. Six yep, and I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it seems like this may be a situation where some people uh, said somebody was coming. They didn't end up coming to the show or whatever. And you know, subsequently, they know it, that person wasn't going to come, but they still pretended and promoted like said wrestler was coming to the show. Mm -mm -mm. Days later, WrestleZone posted an article that showed an email statement from Shawn Michaels' agents. And while the original article with the email it does not exist anymore due to Shawn Michaels' agents asking to take it down, I'm guessing that this statement was something to do with the fact that this appearance wasn't happening. However, following the posting of that article, WrestleZone were contacted to say that 1PW and Shawn Michaels were still negotiating. However, after this, 1PW simply just went silent. Uh -oh. And they closed their doors 
once again, leaving the fans fuming as they didn't have a Shawn Michaels meet and greet, nor did they have refunds. Oh. After weeks of silence, Danny Rod finally came out in August of 2011 to release a statement. In his statement, Danny claims to be a victim of a scam and that the fall has been placed on him for HBK ultimately not making it to the UK, saying that he has taken the heat away from the main culprit. But regardless of who was to blame, fans were left in the dark, yeah. Shawn Michaels never came, fans never got refunds, Damn. and one PW was finished. Or was it because somehow 11 years later, 1PW returned with its original ownership and that is exactly what we're going to be discussing in part two. Yes, yes, this is a two-parter. Been very rare, been a very long time since I've That's done one of crazy, these. That's crazy, man. Like and subscribe to be the first to see part two. Yeah, uh, that's, um, <laughs> that's wild, bro. That's, 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 I, I can't, I can't imagine, I'm pretty sure the tickets weren't that cheap, but can't imagine around the time Shawn Michaels retired and you get a chance to meet the legend himself after just retiring recently at this, uh, you know, at this show, just to find out, well, you don't even find out, they just go silent, they close their doors, and you don't get a refund. I would be pissed bro because like i said I'm, I'm willing to bet they paid some good money to have hbk out there they advertising this i'm sure you're gonna pay some good money to actually see the person the consumers that's fucked up that's scummy that's trash i i'm not a big fan of stuff like that man that 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 sucks for all the individuals that paid their money that weren't able to get it back man that's why it's such it's 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 a give and take you don't know how things are going to go. You can only hope for the best and someone takes advantage of it, man. So comment down below. Let me know. Have y'all ever been to like a wrestling show in your lifetime, whether it was WWE or whether it was um, some other promotion, even if uh, it was an indie promotion and they promised a certain wrestler to be there only for said wrestler not to be there. How did it make you feel if you've ever been in that situation? But I appreciate all love, support. Road to 150K. And I'm still getting to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.